Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. So, today I want to present a very simple but cool and effective way to find your azimuth, the VTA, the correct vertical tracking angle of your cartridge tone arm and hence the SRA, the stylus rake angle. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay guys, so in this short video, I wanna present a very simple tool that I found on Amazon. I will put the links here below. Very cheap, but very effective. And, and what shocked me is that similar tools that are present in different online stores cost like 10, 20 times what I'm about to show you. But let's see what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this little guy, which comes in a nice fake leather pouch. You're gonna have different things inside. We're gonna have the main tool. As I said, we have this piece of acrylic. I hope you can see it. Very nice, very precise by Elvan, whoever that is. It changes name and, and type all over Amazon. There, there are multiple types. I will link the cheapest one in Europe and America. And this is, as you can see, it has these drawn lines, which is very helpful when you're trying to do what? Well, try to find your, see, something like this, the VTA. And in, it's, it's rather difficult to do so. So this is of great help. Otherwise, you're gonna have to get your ruler, go by the eye, which is not good. This little guy is very effective. Now, there are other ones that also have the SRA, the stylus rake angle, which really shows you how uh, the stylus is supposed to pause, touch on your record, because that's what we're looking for. The whole azimuth, VTA and SRA stuff is to find the correct way the stylus, obviously this is the position of the stylus on the record, it has to be in a certain angle in order to have the minimum distortion possible and the best tracking possible, okay? No, 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 stop it right there. Wait a moment, where are we going here? What are we talking about? What are the main topics of VTA, SRA, azimuth? No, 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 we have to explain this to our people, okay. Let's take a pause and let's take also a look at what these terms mean connected to our cartridge and to the correct alignment of that. There's a whole debate if these elements are worth doing, do, do have an impact on sound. Uh, I, without going too much in detail, I think they do, but not too much. And also it's very difficult to acquire them because the turntable, the cartridge, the tone arm, the record, the mat, all the various elements change very. So you're never gonna keep that angle, even if you're able to really block it, really hit that point of having the perfect angles of all these elements. But let's take a look at what we're talking about again. Okay, let's start with the azimuth. Now this is our cartridge watching, looking at it in front. And what do we have to achieve? A 90 degree, perfect perfectly parallel or perpendicular, we could say to the record surface. As you can see, here's the stylus and here's the cartridge and here's the 90 degree. You have it here, you have it here. Here you can see how you can use this tool, the Elvon tool to achieve a perfect azimuth, which simply means if this cartridge is crooked somehow going on the left or on the right. See this little part here in the center, this little grill, you're using this to determine the azimuth. Plus, besides this, which is useful, you obviously need, uh, it's a good idea at least to use also the level, the little bubble here that's included also in the kit. Now, this level is a slightly crooked and I'll tell you why in a while, but this is just to show you where you put the level on top of your cartridge 
and you try to put the level, the little bubble, right in the middle like this. Okay, now this was the azimuth, very quickly. Let's go ahead. Now, let's talk about the SRA, the stylus rake angle. As you can see, the angle is this part here, this angle formed from the vertical part of the, of the record, as you can see. The stylus, which is in the groove, because this image is pretty accurate, it's also considering the stylus, the diamond tip, inside the groove. And as you can see, this list, uh, hypothetical line is slightly crooked towards left. In fact, the correct stylus rake angle should be, as you can see here, 92, not perfectly 90. That Why is that? Because the whole system, the cantilever, the, 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 the cartridge, etc., brings this optimal solution, this optimal angle, and not a 90 degree. Also, for how the stylus should position itself inside the groove. So, you should achieve a 92 angle, which obviously it's very hard to do. Even a 90, a 90 degree angle is already a lot if you're able to do that. But this is almost a consequence of VTA, the vertical tracking angle. I mean, if you achieve a correct angle of this, you're probably gonna have also a correct stylus rake angle. In fact, a lot of times we talk and mistakenly we exchange both terms, but they are two different things actually. Now, as you can see, the vertical tracking angle is mainly 15 degrees if we're talking about older turntables, vintage turntables. With the modern, they say, so they say, we have to go on 20 degrees, okay? And as you can see, it's not simply the cantilever and the surface of the record. Nope. You have to consider here the pivot point of the stylus going all the way up here to the center of the cantilever. So as you can see, you have a line that is not following the cantilever, but it's following a different trajectory. And this should be around 15 or, as I said, 20 for modern turntables. Again, it's difficult. It's difficult to establish this. In any case, these are the two elements. Now, if we proceed, we can see here using this tool, the Elvan, to determine the VTA. Now, I deliberately wanted to put this a little crooked. See, I put a way too much weight. It's squishing the stylus here. Don't worry, the stylus is practically ruined, it's gone. But I wanted to show you here how, it, how it's working. Now, see here? Here we have a little too much space. This should, this should be aligned with this. But at the same time, if we check, the cartridge appears to seem straight following this other line. Now, it depends from the photograph. It depends at what height I'm looking at this. So don't pay attention too much to this photo. You have to do this live and understand it on your own. Let's just say that you do have to follow precise lines. So this has to be aligned. In this case, it is not. And you should also do this with your arm. Okay? This, if you can. Now, we have an S-arm. I have an S-arm with my techniques. So it's, it's much more difficult and complicated. But if you have a straight arm, it should be much easier. And you put the Elvan behind it, and you just see when you have a perfect alignment with these lines. At that point, you're going to have a good VDA and probably a good SRA. Now, let's go back to our bubble. As you can see, this bubble is crooked because, in fact, as I said before, this is not perfectly aligned. So, it's good. It's okay if it's like this because it's all wrong. So, again, make sure that you have at least the VTA obtained through a parallel cartridge and arm and also the azimuth. See, now this is a close-up of my cartridge, the Dina Vector. And as you can see, you can pretty much see the, the stylus. And this is the angle I'm having. You should consider this and this. And more or less, it should be around 20, I think. I'm not that sure, actually. And probably, and obviously, you, we can't determine it from the photograph because this is not live. This is a photograph. You would need something like this. Now, this is another type of, uh, we could call it, alignment of the stylus. 
The one I showed you is very cheap and does not have, unfortunately, see, the VTA and the SRA of the stylus, okay? We just have these, which is already a great starting point. If you wanna go ahead, as you can see, see, we have the correct SRA, which is 92 degrees right over here. And again, the VTA, which should be around 20 or C, 16, 15 for the vintage ones. If you, you can try to align these with the, with the stylus, it ain't simple, but that's the way you could use this other smart stylus as they call it. And this one of acoustical systems goes for, I've, I've just checked it on a, a UK website, which is 100 pounds. A little too much, I think, for a piece of acrylic. But I'm sure you can find something similar having all these elements on them. Okay, now we can proceed. So in order to find that, the best way, the empirical way, is to have a perfectly parallel arm and cartridge and all these all these parts of the tracking perfectly parallel to the surface of the record obviously to regulate the vta you need the possibility to lower or higher your arm like for the technics in this case which can go up and down and as i said this is ideal the cool thing is that it comes also with a teeny weeny little level which I think all on its own is worth the, the purchase because these little things, which obviously don't cost anything for whom is producing them, but it's difficult and they charge you a lot just to have this little tiny pre precision bubble because it's so small that it is automatically precise. And this, you put it on top of your head shell or whatever it is where you have your cartridge in order to have the perfect alignment. Obviously, you have to lower everything while you're doing the measurements. I mean, the, the, the cantilever, the stylus has to touch the surface of the record. So, you get the level, you get the uh, azimuth piece of acrylic, you get a nice little pouch to keep everything inside for how much? Five euro in Europe and a little more in the US. $11.70, I think, on Amazon. But, and you know, Amazon changes prices. Obviously, this is all coming from China, so it'll take weeks to reach you. But if you go on other places, I've seen this for 120 euro. Oh, yes. And even, or even other brands, 50 or 60 euro. It's crazy. It's insane. It's just a piece of plastic. But it's done correctly and it's useful. So I just wanted to signal this out to you. Again, I'll put the links here. As you know, if you click these type of links, a small percentage, like a few cents, come to me, especially on this type of expense. So thank you for using them. And that's all. Thank you, guys. Thank you again for watching. Put your comments here below if you have other similar objects you want to signal. We're all interested. Thank you again. And remember, music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.